Okay, let's just do one more lesson on pointers before we uh, we get to classes and we get to some real uh, joy and we can start building some financial tools. Okay, usual uh, usual trick. Let's get rid of anything hanging about. You can get all this code off the website should you require to see it again. I'm sure you will be spending endless evenings looking at that magnificent code. Okay. Back in the good old days, oh, before we start, there's, there's two kinds of memory for C++. There's um, stack memory that we create at compile time. And then there's a thing called heap memory, which we can play about with uh, while we're executing the program for things which we don't know about until after we've run the program. Anyway, back in the good old days, what we'd typically do with uh, a standard kind of array is we hard code, or in some way use a constant for the size of the array. That, that will assign five um, blocks of double memory inside the stack. Then we could fill that particular um, array with the... Uh, so I'll just make up a little algorithm just to fill it up with some fun numbers. Um, dub array i equals i plus 1 times 100 plus i plus 1. There we are. Should give us some meaningful numbers. Um, then obviously we just to check that that's working okay we'll, we'll run a similar bit of code again and we'll we'll print out What's inside there? Okay, you can talk amongst yourselves. And then Give that a whiz. You can see we've uh, created an array with five elements. Uh, that can be a const integer, but it must be. Well, in most versions of C++ I've used that uh, that must be some kind of known value before the program runs, before the program compiles. Um, things have changed slightly in recent times, but let's not go there for now. So that's good old fashioned old days. Create an array with five elements, put five elements in it, then use it. Now, what if before you run the program you don't know how many elements? Let's say it could be between anywhere between 10 and 500 elements. Well, you'd have to put 500 there just in case they went up to the full 500. But then if they only pick 10, you've then wasted uh, 490 slots of memory to hold doubles and, and you've slowed down your program and used up a lot of memory. So what we can do then is we can take advantage of a thing called the, the heap. And after the program's compiled, we can work out the size of an array. We could even input it into the program after we've run the program, after we've compiled it. So let's just do that now with a special couple of special functions called new and delete. So I'm going to ask the user of this program, how big would you like your array to be? And then they'll type in a number. I'm, I'm going to expect them to type in something meaningful, a 1 to whatever it is, not minus 75. We'll, we'll deal with that in a thing called exceptions um, in, a, in a few lessons' time, if they put something strange in there. Okay, so... What we need to do then is we need to use C in, go the other way this time into our new variable array size. And now what we can do is we can do this. We can create a pointer. I'll call that pointer double array equal to new double array size. And this is dynamically allocated memory in the heap. Obviously we have to have enough memory, we don't want to be 
going beyond the size, but let's assume we do have uh, enough memory to play with. And uh, that's dynamically allocated. It's after the program's run. So now we can do pretty much what we did earlier. I'll just kind of copy this code, change a few names around. And uh, P, oh, P double A, and then P double A, P double A. I think I've got everything right there. Okay, now there is one little difference between this and the previous section. This was all hard coded, you've got five slots regardless of what you do. It's like an aeroplane, it's got five. 550 seats, you know, one passenger on there, 550 passengers on there. Don't ever put 551 on there, otherwise you could crash the whole thing, but you got one plane. This plane, it could either be a one-seater fighter pilot plane or it could be a jumbo jet. It all depends on how big you would like your plane to be, how many seats you would like it to have. But we do always have to to remember this command at the end. Now if, it, if I'd created a new scalar single thing, I would just go delete p dub r. That would be if I if it, this wasn't an array, so if I, somehow that uh, wasn't an array, but this is an array. So I have to put these braces here. Now if you forget to do that, you could give yourself um, oh. you could give yourself an awful lot of grief. So do remember the difference there. It's not going to automatically stick those things in for you. In the background, you must put those in explicitly. So delete this array, which is pointed to by a dub bar, which you created up here. Now you must do this every time. Otherwise you're going to get into the horrible world known as memory leaks. And well, your heap's going to get exhausted. You're going to be paging and swapping and dying and slowing and you're going to get phone calls at four in the morning from Singapore saying the database has gone down. Please fix it. And you could be in Acapulco having a gin and tonic, so you don't want to get that phone call. So always clean up after yourself. So this is getting towards object orientation here. Last little step before object orientation. New and delete. Oh, sorry. So I just missed something out, didn't I? That five, that hard-coded five that we saw up here and up here is now changed to this new array size. So now you can overwrite things. I mean, if I asked for three and then I'd done five, I would have could have overwritten who knows what. So lots of error checking, lots of program testing, obviously. But once you've got it tested and you've got it optimized. This thing will go faster than anything else on the planet, which is why we use it. Because of all this use of pointers and objects and so on, templates. So let's, uh, hopefully I've got all that right while I've been talking. So how big would I like my array to be? Ooh, three. Bang, there we are. All happy, all sorted. Um, let's run it again. How big would I like my plane to be? 550. No problem. Kind problem. As long as I have enough memory in the heap. Let's run it again. 2000. I've got 2000 CDS swaps I need to reprice. Okay. No problem. All dynamically allocated and then all, th all these CDS prices calculated and then all thrown away afterwards back onto the heap. So, that's the beginnings of dynamic memory allocation. I'll see you next time.